So in previous videos, we started drawing, then we started ordering the plates, then we started assembling, putting in all the different assemblies into place, a bottom hole of welding, then we put the main deck and all in place. And now we're almost finishing up everything that we need to tack weld. And now we're gonna talk about the welding and the grinding. And the welding is especially important. You see a lot of videos on YouTube, internet, pictures, whatever, about dropping dimes, making the perfect weld. But a lot of times they do not talk about the direction of welding, how to separate heat into your project and material to keep everything straight and lined up because welding comes with a lot of shrinkage. And in this video, I will talk about how to reduce it and how to separate it into the material so everything is nice and straight when you weld it everything fully. Let's get into it. So here we are, we put pretty much everything into place. Now this is still connected on, the, uh, on that side, but this is a general idea where we are at the moment. In the previous part, we put uh, this, this uh, plateau over here and now we're putting in this uh, closing up plate here. Now you can see, let's pause this uh, uh, real quick. So you can see gaps here, right? Because what happened? This material right here, there is like a U-shaped profile in here and that was welded. And what do you get when you weld? You get shrinkage. The material that has been welded tends to be shorter afterwards. So if you tack weld a circular plate in the middle, it's pulling the plate into different shapes because it's the, the shrinkage. And that is what happened here. Now I'm tack welding this plate into place and I actually have a hydraulic pers uh, press in the boat, pushing up this plate to make it straight again. As you can see here, I go inside and you can see that I'm pushing up that plate and make the tack welds. And you only have to make it straight where the tack weld is. You can see here now how it's fully closing up and it's now really straight. And if you're liking this content this far, could you please hit that like button? That really helps me out. And if you wanna see more of this, uh, consider subscribing. So, but before we get into all the welding and direction, I just wanna show uh, this small part here and talk about fabrication in general. Because the better you tack weld something and the better straight everything is, the nicer the weld's going to be, yeah? So you have welders saying, yeah, we have very, can weld very nicely, but if you don't tack weld something correctly, then it's also gonna be way difficult. And you're gonna see that here in this small part that we're gonna build here. You can see the also here, the lines here, uh, having it like really straight and accurate will make it easier to weld as well. So yeah, here's gonna be the wires and uh, this is just an extra strengthening uh, part to m finally close it up because this is actually the engine area and I don't want to be, I wanna keep that separate from the swimming plateau, right? You can see here, straight line and then you can actually weld it properly. So here we are, we have everything. So this benches were already welded and grinded fully because it comes with a separate part. So if you can build a separate part like a bench, and make that fully well that completely you first you will have it on your workbench it will be very easy to access and put it in every desired position and it does if it doesn't gonna have an effect on the overall shrink shrinkage of your project then it's completely fine to do that it's actually recommended same for this part as well these u-shaped bended was actually welded before i put the whole sub assembly into place same for this one and yeah so you can see everything this is like hours and hours of building and building and building. And now we're going to do welding, 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 welding. Let's go, people. So you can immediately see what I'm doing here. I'm welding towards the weld. You can see here, I'm going to my old weld. Why am I doing this? Well, if you weld a certain direction, friction will follow. Yeah, so if you're, if you're welding from here, to there, friction follows the plate, right? This is what happens. And if you weld towards a weld, so let's say we did a welding here and we are coming to edit right here, we are canceling it out and we're separating the heat shrinkage. 
if that makes sense. So you cannot weld this direction, this direction, go there, all the way there, and come back around the boat and go completely like this, because then your project's gonna like twist because of the tension in the material is gonna follow it. And you can see that in every part of welding in this project, I'm pretty much always going from one side to the other side. And what I do on the starboard side, I will do on the port side as well. So this is constantly something that you need to consider. A lot of times people might say, yeah, I have the perfect weld, but if then they welded this completely, this direction and this direction and this direction, and they did that like over here to the other side that way as well, then, and then at the end of the day, a project is like completely disaligned. We can see on the signature of the weld that it was welded in circles, and that is absolutely the most horrible thing you can do. And here you can see that as well. Basically, I'm bringing everything backwards. Like this one up, that one up, that one up, that one up. I'm doing this with TIG, by the way, because I want to grind this everything, and I really have more control with TIG. I can really see the melting material seeing how that is actually flowing nicely and it's gonna take me a little bit uh, like a lot longer to weld with the TIG but with the grinding it's gonna be way easier because I don't have any start stop issues when I do MIG welding so MIG welding will be six times faster than this but uh, yeah this just gives me more control so again you can see I'm going from here to here and then I will go here and here but the best thing is about this now over here it's cooling down right we have that the material have to, has the chance to cool down now I'll go over here and over here I'm just basically separating the heat everywhere over here as well again then now I start welding some here again and just basically balancing out the heat in the structure instead of just doing one side first yeah separate it Go from left to right like a robot like a little bit here a little bit there and again the direction changes very important B going back to your original weld because the chances are if you keep going in one straight line uh aluminium also has a tendency to crack so So again, more welding, again, the same trick, going from the inside, outside, you see me every time grind a little bit to make it like to take away a little bit of old tack so I don't have any bumps along the way. And here as well, um, think about like 20, 30 hours of welding at this stage. So uh, basically non-stop and uh, you get square eyes from it basically, but uh, yeah. Uh, this, yeah, I, I think it took me like a week to completely weld it fully. Again, something to note here, uh, before we move on, you see this wooden profile and the clamp? I'm holding these materials together because you see here some gaps and there's like, it's not always like perfect night and day. Yeah? You always have like a little bit of a gap. You need to like lower the power or be a bit slowly or put in more wire to fill in the, the gaps that you might face. But this is important to keep things in structure. So sometimes you just need to get some big beams and strong clamps to keep making sure that the material doesn't have free space to shrink into. So imagine, let's say you have a massive gap over here. Yeah, and you could not tack weld it properly. If you didn't connect these benches to something, you could also push a press here. But I just made this decision. What's going to happen is when you have a gap, it starts shrinking more. So the more gaps you have, the more shrinkage you have. And you might find that this bench now all of a sudden goes down. And once it's there and fully welded, it's pretty hard to reverse that. So if you can prevent that with putting in some clamps, then you're in a better spot. And this is obviously the choices you make. Do I prevent it or do I fix it afterwards? And I like to prevent stuff, you know, before they happen. So a little bit of a side note as of for clamping up stuff when you're fully welding something. 
So yeah, you can see here that I already did all this welding. I did a lot of with uh, MIG as well. Yeah, you can see the uh, machine. Oh, this is the TIG machine that I have. You can see how nicely straight this line is. And if you're on the back of the boat, then this is also pretty much straight lined up. Uh, so yeah, here we go. Some more MIG welding. Again, same with the directions. Again, to the, to the old weld pop pop. And you can see how much faster this actually goes, right? Like, if you want to weld, do it with MIG, then you will be way faster than with the TIG. Now, at this stage, I am grinding. Grinding, grinding, because I want these welds to be, uh, like, really smooth. I don't want to have any sharp edges, and it's I think it's r way more beautiful to um, grind it nicely. And I will talk a little bit about why the, I'm doing this and how I'm doing this and, like, what is the, the, the optimum result, right? So, let's talk about that a little bit. So, what I did... This is why I did it with uh, with the uh, TIG, because then um, if the weld is very nice and smooth, then grinding it off will be also a really easy job. Now, this is vital that I don't touch this material over here or over there, because that will leave a mark on the fresh newly material, and I don't want that. So I'm really careful with the grinder getting rid of this weld basically now i'm i don't know how you say that in english but you have a, a different kinds of roughness to the um grinding discs and the grinding disc i use i started with 60 it's like a p60 and then you have 120 and whatever like higher numbers and if you're doing at a pretty like you had the lowest number we have is 38 it's a basically really rough surface that is actually creating more scratches into the material that you later need to grind off so i started with 60 and you can see that over here i don't know if you can see it it's a really rough disc to get rid of the most of the material and then it's just basic polishing up that weld up to like a roughness of like when it's really smooth uh, later i will also show you how smooth it, it uh, became and uh, this is what i did with a lot of welds as well to make it like like it's not looking so rough because we we sure we we like the welds but i like to be the smoothness and like a holistic like complete like a yeah how do you call it like a really nice surface that you can just like, if you were naked and you were going to sit on the side of the boat, I don't want to have any scratches or, like, whatever, you know? So, uh... <laughs> so, yeah. And to give you an idea how slow this actually goes, right? I mean, first we're using the rough disc to take off the most uh, of the welding material. And you need to make like long movements and like don't stay in one place because then you will grind off too much and you'll like start shoveling out the material and you're gonna see that. So you keep, need to keep grinding. I'm not a professional grinder there in the area where I live. There are actually people are very, very good at this. They can make like everything like smooth as, as uh, like unbelievably smooth. So... Yeah, just have a, the, like, this is how long that takes. Yeah, and it, it takes ages to do. But it's definitely worth it uh, afterwards because then you will get absolutely the nicest uh, looking surface afterwards, as you can see now in the next clip. So here we are. Here you can see how that actually looks. Smoothness all the way up, and you can see how very nicely the uh, sides plates are still are. Now, in the next video, we're gonna start building this window, and let me tell you, this is the most exciting part because that really completes the whole shape. And it was absolutely is getting amazing at this point. Now, if you're liking this content, please. Hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. We're gonna build this thing completely until we're floating and sailing over the water. See you in the next video. If you want to continue this run of these videos, here will be the next one when it's ready. Thanks for watching.